All right, so uh, because some people, hey, that's not the terminal I want. That's the terminal I want. Because some people uh, are unfamiliar with terminal, I'm going to show you this. But today what we're going to be looking at is Flexbox examples. If you're watching this video line, this is just a short tangent. So I'm just going to change into my documents and then HTML, CSS. And I list, list all. And I can see that that has a lot of files. And there is uh, the git, so that's my git repository. So I'm going to do a git status. I've had some changes. So git add dash dash all adds it to my staging index. Git commit dash m changes. This is an example of a bad commit message. Git push. So all that code is now up there. All the changes I've made. All right. So uh, the main takeaway from these Google examples is you want to build mobile first. So if you're doing something else, this is the moment where you tune in. You want to build mobile first. And we're going to see that in action. We're going to do some refactoring of some code. And then you want to use the way Google does it, or I'm not going to say Google, but the way these examples from Google, the way they're done, is they've, they've set display flex, flex flow, row wrap on something. So that means, okay, we've got a flex container and the items inside are going to have their main axes will be a row and they'll wrap when they get to the end of the row. Well then the design pattern that they use is figure out what you want on each row and have it add up to 100%. If it's one thing you want on a row, 100%. Width equals 100% or width property value 100%. Right? If it's two things you want on a row, 60-40, 70-30, 80-20. If it's three things you want on a row, 20-60-20. 10-80-10, right? The things you want on a row add up to 100%. And then, after it's 100%, it'll just wrap to the next row for stuff, put that 100% on the next row, wrap to the next row for stuff, put that 100% on the next row. So that's the pattern. And we can see that in action right here. And we can see that in action right here. <laughs> I'm uh, my son says right there. <laughs> it's totally cute. I'm gonna put this right there. <laughs> Drags it out. The sweetest thing in the world. All right. So uh, if we look at I put all the styles in one. So here's the layout. So I'll split it vertically, right like that. And uh, you can see here's my container, and it's got display flex, flex flow, row wrap. And then mobile first, the items one, two, three, four, and five all take up a width of 100%. They're all going to occupy their own row. And then we get to the first breakpoint, 600 pixels on up. So from the minimum width, 600 on up. You didn't get the stickers today. You've been here nine months, you've earned two stickers. If you stay or nine weeks, if you stay nine more weeks, you'll earn two more stickers. Feels like it's been nine months. So there, when we hit our first break point, two, three, four, and five are each going to be fifty percent. Oh, we have one more person. You've been here nine months. You've earned two stickers. Nine weeks. One of them's a little bit already weathered. So 600 pixels, 2, 3, 4, and 5, we're going to have two things on each row because they're each 50%. And 800 pixels, uh, we're going to have 1 and 2 are going to be on one row because the order in the HTML matters. So those will be at the top. right? We haven't changed order over in CSS, which we could do with Flexbox. But 1 and 2 will be on the first row, and 3, 4, and 5 will be on the second row because those are each 33%. So when we look at that in action, we're building mobile first. That's the first one, right? They're each 100%. So the container, flex, flex flow is row wrap. So flex directions row and flex wrap is wrap. 
as opposed to no wrap would be the default. And then C1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 each are taking up a width of 100%. What would happen if I changed this to 51%? Yeah, I think we'll have one on each row, but I don't know if they'll fill up the entire row. Because two can't fit on a row, that's 102%. So got to kick it on to the next row. What if I change it to 50%? Two on each row. To get this to look more purdy, what could I do to get this to look more... Symmetrical, purdy. Huh? Flex grow. Flex grow. That's cool. Flex grow one. Because now the items each grew. But it looks like, because flex, we have flex grow, flex shrink, and flex basis. And basis defaults to auto and auto is the width and I don't have complete certainty that basis defaults to auto so we're gonna go look that up I have it open basis initial value auto and auto just means take on the width so flex grow one means it's growing by one and and there's no flex shrink set, and basis is, is the same as width, and width is 50%. But that doesn't make sense because that just turned into 100%. Don't just turn it into 100%. Huh? Oh, it starts out at 50% and then grows. That's what, that's what basis does. So it grew from 50%. What else might we have done instead of flex grow? We could have also just done flex because if you just have, whoa, that was different. Flex, I thought flex and flex grow were the same deal. Flex grow one versus flex because it says here one value unitless number flex grow so there's one value flex grow versus we just specified flex grow right but when we specified flex grow, we got that. When we do flex, we get that. Flex by two, same. It's just proportional. I like that one the best. I'm a little bit confused by that. Anybody have insight into that? If you confuse Todd, we all confused. That's where I spend like half hour, hour reading, learning stuff. We could do flex one, zero, auto. <coughs> Specify all of them. So that's a flex grow, flex shrink, flex basis. And we can see that right here. Three values, flex grow, flex shrink, flex, bi flex basis. One value is supposed to be just flex grow. So I don't know why it gets all messy when I just say flex. Maybe I need vendor prefixes or something. All right, so that's one way we can make it look a little bit more purdy. Nice experiment. Oh, I didn't want to close that. What's another way we can make it look purdy? What about 
Anything here that can make it look pretty? Er? I'd probably choose center. Justify content center. That's a container property. So set it right here. Centered it. So that's a little bit more symmetrical. What if this was 40%? Kind of funny. Why is that? Oh, because 40%, 40, 40, 80. And then why are the two below taken up? Oh, there's, there we are. We're below 600. So that's what it is. Thank you. I was over 600, which was confusing me. This was originally 100%. Gives us that. So the main takeaways for the visually oriented. Have a container that uses flex, flex flow row wrap, and then each row, what you want on each row adds up to 100%. That's the pattern, okay? And you want to build mobile first. Are we building mobile first on this code? How many people say no? How many people say yes? Yeah, right on. We're building mobile first because all of our code is like for everything less than 600 pixels. And then 600 pixels, we start shifting it. So, okay, you got bigger than mobile. And then at 800 pixels, we start shift, shifting it. And, and if we're at 850, is line 17 still being run? If our pixels are 850 of our viewport, is line 17 still being run? Yeah, because 850 is more than 600, so run it. That condition's true. Right? You want to say that again? 850 is more than 600. Right? So if the minimum width is 600 or more, run this code. So 850 is more, so it's running. So all that stuff builds, right? And then you have to make sure it overwrites correctly. So then, you know, here we have those four go to 50%. You see how that's like 50, 50, that's 100%, 50, 50, that's 100%. And then here at 800, we have uh, 1 is 60, and 2 is 40, and 3, 4, and 5 are 33. Is this rudimentary? How many people this is like, you're going too slow? How many people are like, oh, this is, this is cool. I'm starting to see how that works. All right, good. Right? Because it's like, okay, all I need is I need my container with display flex, flex flow row wrap. And then I just figure out what I want on each row, and it has to add up to 100%. And I start with mobile. And I put in my breakpoints, and I start saying, okay, what, what are the rows from that point forward? That's theory. Actually, build a site. That's something you do outside academia. <laughs> All right, here's another one. Mobile first. There's our HTML. We have one, two, three. Notice they're lined up one, two, three, the same order, same uh, flow, document flow, right? HTML document flow. Div 1, Div 2, Div 3, Divs take up an entire line. Fill in the entire, take up as much space as possible, and then go to the next one. So that's the HTML. What the heck is roll still doing in there? I thought I'd stripped all those out. It's funny how you could work on code and not see something. You can look up roll on your own if you want to see what roll does. 
roll, no, I guess I'm going to do it actually, roll CSS, uh, roll HTML. What is the purpose of the roll attribute in HTML? Most of the roles you are defined part of ARIA 1.0. Uh, accessibility. So, all right, so then we have our styles, just colors for the font and background color for one, two, and three. And then we have our CSS. So, container with padding and margin set to zero, content, padding, border, margin. And then we have width 100%. Display flex, flex flow, row wrap. And then C123, width 100%. Sweet. It's mobile. That's mobile first. They're each taking up their own line. That's what we have. Each taking up their own line. And we add the height in just to give them a little dimension. Otherwise, they're just wrapping around their words. And then we have a breakpoint, 600 pixels and above. One becomes 60%, two becomes 40%, three becomes 100%. But we change the order. C2 became one, C1 became two. So two is now one in position one. You can see that top left, right? And one is in position two. You can see that order two over there in the CSS right here. And those two together are 100%, 60-40. And then the bottom one's 100% by itself. Cool. And then we have the third one. C2 and 3 go to 20%. Huh? So C2 and 3 right here just got overwritten. They used to be 40 and 100. That just got overwritten. And now what's being applied is uh, C2 is width 20%, C3 is width 20%, C1 is width, width 60%, 100% total. All three of those are being applied. And the order was kept, right? So C2 is still in position one. You can see order one, C2, and that's two. C1 is in position two, that's in position two. And C3 is in position three. It's in position three, so it kept the order. So unless you specifically reorder them, it'll just keep Yeah, it keeps it. So it doesn't overwrite all those rules. It just overwrites each declaration. A declaration overwrites a declaration. The width declarations right here overwrote the width declarations right here, but those are still being applied. That declaration is still being applied. Are you bored with the pattern yet? Cool, well, uh, give me one moment. I gotta find something. Yeah. Six, six, six. Six hundred.
build that. And let's do this together. So, so, in my index, I'm going to need four divs, and I'll give them different classes and call it something. And I think that uh, you have to have a alphabet characters starting out of class. It's either class or ID, doesn't like numeric, maybe both. So four divs, that's my emmet for it, each with a different class. Okay, and I'll just call them one, two, three, four. Now I'm ready for my CSS. So I think I will uh, do a new CSS file called style. And I need to add in styles. And I'm going to call this one layout. That's not what I was looking for. And I'll change that one to layout. And I don't need a picture there, but maybe I should leave it in case everyone wants to reference it. Bless you. So now my styles. I've got uh, four classes. So foo one. Two, three, four, and div. So div uh, height, 300 pixels, foo one, background color, And uh, red. What's the Italian flag? Green. green, white, red. Green, white, red. And just orange. So that's my uh, just my styling. Let's look at it. See what it looks like. Okay, how about that? <laughs> Because the Italian goes sideways? Close enough. How is it the Italians know style so well? Like, even that, that looks good, you know? Though it probably wrecks havoc for colorblind people. So, my next step is to do layout. Oh, well, that's where I was getting that funny stuff. And for layout, uh, mobile first. And I need a container, so body, display, flex. I remember that, oh, I got to make a container. And then flex flow is a row wrap. Could have also done flex direction row, flex wrap, wrap. And, uh, and then for mobile, I want to make each of my divs. So I don't know if I need to specify each of them individually. I think so. And the reason I can't just do div is because of CSS specificity. So if I do uh, div, 
I have that specificity. And if I do a class, I have that specificity. So actually, I could start out with a div and then overwrite the div declaration with a class because a class has a higher specificity. So that would work if you follow what I'm talking about. But I'm just going to do uh, foo, foo1, foo2, foo3, and foo4, and uh, width 100%. Don't really know if I need anything else. And, uh, and that should give me the same deal. Same deal. Ready for a breakpoint? Now I told you that you should do your breakpoints in a separate CSS style sheet, I think, because it's more modular and, and you can bring down as many resources as you want with HTTPS and HTTP2, sorry, with HTTP2. So instead of putting it right there, I think I'll stick to that design guideline. Should probably refactor all of my code to reflect that. And uh, I'll have a new style sheet, and I'll call it layout 600 plus. That makes sense. And then here, to trigger that code, I will add in another link. And it'll be layout 600 plus. And then I have to put in a media. And the media will be screen. And did I put an and or I just do this? Do I need an and there? How many people say I need an and? I mean, people say I do not. MDN media queries. App media. Media query list and or media features, media types, all print screen, media features with a height. And... Uh, Media print, media screen, media screen, comma, print. That's interesting. Using media queries. Media max width, 800 pixels. Min width and orientation landscape. Media TV and min width and orientation landscape. So maybe it sounded to you like I was asking that rhetorically, like a teacher and then showing you how you'd find the answer. I truly had that question. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, what is it? So there. But I haven't done anything different at 600. So at 600, what I want to have done I want it to look like this. After screen. After where? Screen. Right here? Like that? I think so. That whole line goes like that. Screen and mid width 600 pixels. But, very observant. Good possibility that that could have been the case. So now we've got uh, 600 plus. I need to change order, and I also need to change size. So four, two, three. So I'm just going to do these in order. Foo one. Well, I guess I could put in in their order. Right, will be like one. 
foo one becomes four, and uh, foo one is width one hundred percent. But I don't need to say that for foo one because I've already said that here. Foo one's already width one hundred percent, so I don't need to overwrite it. Foo two. Two becomes two, so I don't need to change, but I need to change the width, so I don't need to change that. It's already that by default. I think I might need to turn that back on. And I'll make this like 60, 50. Foo three. Three is in position three. And the width will make 25. And 4. 4 is in position 1. And the width we will make 25. I don't think this is going to work. It's just an experiment. I might be surprised. We have 2, 3, 4, 1. And we were going for 4, 2, 3, 1. So let's go put those orders back on. So we went from two, three, four, one, four, two, three, one, four, two, three, one, and uh, four, two, three are, you know, in the Different sizes, 25, 50, 25, and then 100 down below. I should have made that the Italian flag. How many people got that? Cool. How many people that was really helpful just to try it and just to see it, how to do it? All right. Huh? So remember these takeaways. Build mobile first. Display flex, flex flow, row wrap. What you want on each row adds up to 100%. So we can see that on the fourth one here. We've already looked at a couple others. So what happens right there? get that to happen. Did order change? So look at the C, look at the HTML over here. We have C1, C2, C3, and 2 and 3 are in 4. And 4 has a red border around it just to help you visualize it. So 4 is a container for 2 and 3. So basically, 4 is taken up 100%, and it's filled with 2 and 3, which are each taken up 100%. And then we do this. How do we get that? So it's basically just think 1 and 4, right? Yeah, so maybe 20 for C1, 80 for C4 percent. And then in C4, maybe we need that to be a flex container where things are flex flow column, no wrap, flex direction column, so that 2 and 3 line up as a column. Or maybe just 2 and 3 are divs and we don't worry about it and we just say width 100 percent and they're filling up that thing. And then how's this happen right here? So right there, that's zero. There's 600. That's 600. And then six to eight, and then at eight, how's that happening? Okay. So how do we make say the container has what kind of a max width? We use max width. Max width 800 pixels. 
So at 800 pixels, it stops growing. We have a breakpoint, need a query. And uh, how do we get it centered? Yeah, margin zero auto. Might maybe how we did it. Could have also just said margin left auto, margin right auto. Could have also maybe had all of the body or all of the body be a, a flex container and said justify content center. And then that might be a element in there, the first element that gets centered. So let's look at the styling, background colors and colors. And then C4, I just put a red border around. The C4 is explosive. Because <laughs> C4 is that container. And uh, for the layout, wasn't Daniel in this class at the beginning of the semester? Wasn't he in here, Mikey? What happened to him? Where were you sitting at the beginning of the semester, Alan? Because you weren't sitting there, because Daniel's sitting there. You were over there, that's right. All right, so uh, mobile first. The container has got a width of 100%. Padding, border, margin. Padding and margin are set to zero. I just say all three of those because of the box model. Displays flex, flex flows row wrap. And then one, two, three, and four on the mobile are all 100%. Cool. The immediate direct children of the flex container are told to be rows. So that's C1 and C4, those divs, right? So C1 and C4 are in rows, and they each take up 100% of the row. These are not immediate direct children. How can I illustrate that? What if uh, I make this no wrap? I don't know if that would do it. What if I make it? Um, I wonder if row reverse would do it. Illustrate what I'm trying to show. All right, so row reverse. One, two, three. That didn't change anything, did it? Nothing there, but here. One and four got re reversed, but two, two and three are still just, you know, taking up 100%. That's it. So it's just the immediate direct children. So I'm trying to illustrate. So one and four are the flex items because they are the immediate direct children inside the container. <laughs> Those are the flex items. Is there anything about like inheritance? Maybe? What's being inherited where? Yeah, I'm just, I just wanted to, I'm actually not 100% certain on this. It's just like, a, it's not a verified fact that I have in my head. So when you make something a flex container, let's see if we can find documentation on it. All its direct children, right? It enables flex context for all of its direct children. So not like all of its ancestors, all of its ancestors, children, not all of its children, Right? Just its direct children.
Nothing about direct there. Let's look for children. Yeah. So uh, width is all 100%, and give it some height. At 600, C1 and C4 become 75, 25, making up 100%. So C1 and C4 are uh, C1 is 25, C4 is 75, the red container, the red border. And then at 800, all we do is mar width 800 picks, margin zero auto. Sometimes, and originally this code, this code was like this. Pretty much the same thing. That's that one. This one just changes font size, basically. Small font, medium font, large font. And it also changes the spacing between the paragraphs. So the styling, container, white smoke for the text color, and background color is that blue. And layout, split vertically. Font size, and this is, I've adjusted this code. This is font size 62.5%. Container width, 100%. Padding is one rim, so 10 pixels. Box sizing is border, border box. Font size is 16 pixels. At 500 pixels, padding goes to 32, goes to 20 pixels and 24 pixels for font size. And at 800 picks, padding goes to 40 pixels and 32 pixels for font size. I just wanted to use rim. But you know, we're just multiplying all the rim values by 10 because the root font size is 10 pixels when you multiply 16 default browser font size by 62.5%, you get 10. And here's the last one. I'll show it to you, and then I'll explain to you why JavaScript sucks. So you've seen that, yeah? That's like a common mobile experience. Let me see the menu. So how did I get the button just to stay there? What kind of positioning did I use? Position fixed. And it said fix it to the browser window right there. What would be another one? I could have maybe done uh, absolute. And then it would be relative to the container, right? Next container that has positioning set on it. So maybe I could have fixed it inside one of the containers with absolute. This reminder, position fixed, relative, absolute. Relatives to itself, absolutes to the next thing up the DOM, which has a position property set on it. And uh, fi fixed is just fixed one position relative to the viewport window. So to get that to work is really about JavaScript. So you can look at the style for the CSS, just changing color and background color, so the font color and background color.
and changing layout. Container, display flex, flex flow row wrap. This is stuff we've seen before. Mobile first, one, two, and three all have a width of 100%. Four, which is the menu, is position fixed, and uh, that's the button, right? And it's coming down from the top and left, 40 pixels. And Z index, you can change the stacking order, and basically anything with the Z index goes on top of anything else. And the higher the Z index, the higher, you know, whatever has the higher index. Z index is the top of the stack. So I'm basically saying put this on top of everything. And then uh, the anchor tag inside of C4. Let's give it a little size so we, we have a touch target. Give it a padding of 10 pixels around the anchor. Matches the 10 pixels of that div. And then same border radius matches, and then text decoration none takes away the underline. And you can see that change if I take this border and put that on. Right, you can see that that matches, the border there matches. But if I was to take like, you know, padding away, now that's my touch target. So the padding around the text really pushed it out to match the button around the div. See, I only get the finger right there. And, uh, and if I take border radius off, well now it's a square. doesn't match the button, which is fine because close enough, right? But just to match the button perfectly. And then we have uh, C5. I could have have menu options. C5 is the menu. So I need that big red bar to come out. And the width on that is 300 pixels. The height is 100%. The margin zero. The padding is 20 pixels. How does that change things? Look at where I could have I could have menu options is if I take padding off. I could have menu options is now totally against the wall. So keep that on. And there's padding. Puts padding around the content. And I did box sizing border box so it would grow it shrink inwards as opposed to growing outwards when I change padding and border. And position fixed. Said I'm fixing this at the top left, negative 300 pixels. Take the whole thing and shift it off screen, the same amount that its width is. So it's there, it's just off screen. And then the Z index on that, I gave it a 1, because I want it above everything else but under the button. So Z index 2. And at 600, I just change the stuff we've already seen. 60, 40, 100, these will be on one row, those will be on, this will be on a row. And then 60, 60. 60 and 2020 will make up one. So that's just the layout of this stuff underneath. Right. So the JavaScript on that, that's not what this class is about. But the JavaScript's what makes that happen. And uh, that's the JavaScript. I'm not a big JavaScript coder. I don't know a whole lot about it. I knew enough to build that little game I showed you. Whack a president. Remember that? Couldn't you have used hover to make a big menu box pop up inside like that? Probably. You could probably just do a CSS with hover. What? Until you spent all that time on JS. <laughs>
Let's refactor that. All right. So what do we... Uh, Well, let's think about it. Let's see. So on C4A hover, what do we do? Is that what you think? We could just, first of all, we could change, we could add a border. So on hover, we'll get a border. Just watch that work. There's the border. Black border pops up. So how do we get that menu to pop out with that? What's the problem? We need a certain selector to, change, to have something happen to it. And then we need to be able to change uh, C5, right? So it's kind of hard. You know some other way with hover? There is a way with CSS. I just don't know it. What are you trying to do? CSS pop out menu. When you click this button. So how will we find the answer? Anybody know how we find the answer? CSS, uh, what's, what's it called? CSS slide menu. That's pretty cool. No JS in that. Ready? I'm not going to sit here and try to figure that one out right now. Do you have any other ideas? Uh, no. That's what you're thinking, though, something like that. Could you use the uh, uh, could you use the HTML like use the HTML button and then say like button hover, right? And then you have the and then it would make seem like you would have two different you have two different containers. Uh, you have one overlaying the other. How am I using the Z index like you're using right there? And then that the menu would be maybe underneath it, like the whole page itself. Yeah, there's some way to do it. But the problem with CSS is you write a rule set, which has a selector and a declaration block, and then that applies rules to that selector. Well, we write a rule set to select the button, but then we want to apply rules to the menu. So maybe the button and the menu could all be one big design, and when you hit the button, that part of it, it turns on part of the other design. I don't know. All right, so that's, uh, those are some design patterns for Flexbox. And just remember the main takeaway is build mobile first, use display flex, flex flow row wrap, and uh, what you want on each row adds up to 100%. Those are the main takeaways of that design pattern.